What's going on, Kink fam? It's your boy, Prez, coming at you from the homeland, Kingston, Jamaica. For decades, this island has been one of the world's biggest exporters of culture. But over the past few years, Jamaica has attracted attention for way more than Red Stripe and Reggae. Today, the national team, the Reggae Boys, are on the rise and have high hopes for qualifying for their second World Cup. So we're here to find out why a country with a population smaller than Brooklyn is making an impact on the world's game. Apart from track and field, it's basically football, it's basically everything. Football plays a very huge role presently, especially among the young, younger children. Football positively impacts the social activities in the country. When the football is being played, you hardly hear of any crime and bad behavior. Football in Jamaica is almost like football in Brazil. It's like Brazil. You understand? You are born to play football. Soccer is going in Jamaica, I'm not tell you that. <laughs> In 1998, in a small house in Queens, New York, my uncle sat me down in front of a TV and said, watch this. It was Jamaica's first appearance in the World Cup in France. What I witnessed over the next month not only cemented my love of the game, but inspired a generation of Jamaicans. It was that underlying culture of football that really made 98 happen. The impact of football is just not just about partying and, 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 and creating that all that enthusiasm. It was really about the unity during that period. It was probably the only time in Jamaica that there was no crime or any type of murders or anything. We just for those five, six days. And that is like unprecedented. On the way to the World Cup, it was a long journey, very rocky. And then all of a sudden, it starts to the door open. And then everyone starts to believe. So the whole country start to get behind the team. It actually turned the country upside down with excitement and satisfaction. You know? the, the program started in 1994 when we got Renzi Simo, a Brazilian coach, and that changed how we approached it. Professional level, we, we weren't there as yet. But Simo is basically with his professional expertise came and put everything together. We have a set of players who, who wanted it. You know, who know what we were after, our, our objective of being in the World Cup. And I, and I think, you know, the, the whole camaraderie, living together, we want, we, we want to play for the country, we, we wear the, the shirt with pride. After the World Cup in France, Jamaica hit a lull. The reggae boys playing more like the reggae toys and World Cup qualification seeming more like a dream come and gone. From 98, it kind of go on then just keep on coming down, start to lose ranks. We keep on trying to do what we did in 98, you know, and football has gone past that, you know, every day is like, like at one point in time using a typewriter, now every, everything gets upgraded. You have to look also in the context of what happened with the other countries that we were competing against. Even though they may not have been at the World Cup, a lot more of their players started being developed into top international players who were playing in Europe. For instance, now Real Madrid's goalkeeper is Costa Rica's goalkeeper, right? That's the kind of thing we have encountered. And during that period, we may not have had the level of talent. But around 2014, Jamaica began to rise again. With their best players plying their trade in North America and Europe, they qualified for their first Hex in 12 years, turned heads at the Copa America in Chile, and shocked CONCACAF by beating the U.S. and making it to their first Gold Cup final. Recent success has had Jamaicans believing in the reggae boys again. The resurgence of Jamaica at this period, I think there are a number of factors. I think a major one is the talent and the quality of the players that are now engaged. The last two competitions we played in, we've definitely done you know, more than anyone probably expected and we just want to continue and build on that. At the end of the day, like, we got to prove why we should get the respect we deserve, you know, and I think we did that in last season's Gold Cup, you know, but, but we need to do that on a consistent basis. When Mr. Samoa qualified us for the World Cup, I remember him distinctly say that it's going to take us the next 20 years to qualify again. But he was saying that we never really had the exchange infrastructures in place to really get there consistently. And that is still the main focus. Where the gold and blue royal? Where the gold and blue royal? Guard 
guidance from the Almighty. The guidance from the Almighty. We are chief. 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 We For Jamaica to continue their success, they need to develop players at the local level. The top flight here is the Red Stripe Premier League, and while some believe it's on the right track, others believe it needs more investment. What is the role of the domestic league in Jamaican football? It originally, prior to 98, it provided all the players that would play for the national team. At the moment, it continues to provide players to the national team, but at a much lower rate, Although players are selected from clubs abroad, they, are, they were developed in the league and they were transferred out. So in the main, the role is to continue to drive for the development of the game here. I think, I think we're getting better. I think there's still ways to go in terms of resources um, here in Jamaica. And I think as time goes by, it's definitely getting better. You know, we see players going at a younger age that definitely um, speaks volume. Those who really know the heart of football know that the Tuna programs is the one that is going to sustain the senior program. Many, many players play football, other people, young players play football, talents in the school, uh, in the street, and we have to help these young players. We have to train now our under 17 for 2022, not 2020, it's too late. Yeah. We have to work now with our young players for this tournament. 10, 15 years back, you know, if Jamaicans went overseas, it was at a later age. I think the earlier we can go overseas, it would, it would be the much better. And I think I am one of the prime examples of that. I've seen myself grown over five years, and because of that, I see myself contributing in a scoring in the semi-finals and the finals of the World Cup against poor South Kankakaf. The MLS um, should pay attention to a lot more Jamaicans because they're, they're really quality players and, and um, you get, they have really good attitude and you get your money to work when you get them. Um, I think it's a, been a great stepping stone and I'm there right now. My coaches, everybody there is great. They, they support me when I come here. The better we do at the senior level, it opens the door for every single player in the island, you know, make a statement and make a sound so, play, so teams outside can say, hey, Jamaican players are quality players. Let's go down there. Let's get players to bring back. Is that chicken foot? Yeah. Is that cow skin? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. To reach back to the World Cup would, would be just dynamic for this country. It, it would inspire the youngsters again. This match is huge. Uh, we can't afford to lose. And the general public knows that. The players know that. Right now, we need them to qualify. We're not asking them. We need them. I'm begging them. Forget the hype. It's three precious points against Costa Rica to get us back to the promised land, the World Cup. I've been trying to get here since I was a little kid, since the first time I saw the Reggae Boys in 1998, and I finally made it. We score a goal early, and things get off the ground right. Believe me, Costa Rica is going to be in for a lot of time. We call it the vibes. When we build the vibes, and the vibes get stronger, you can't stop the vibes no more. The fans 
and the Athens they are very raw. Don't get me wrong, if you're putting out your 100%, there is stick behind you. But if you're not putting out 100%, like, you're not going to have your back. Simon Spinta said, anyway, the reggae boys play. Simon Spinta, Fidede, whoa, anyway, the reggae music play. Simon Spinta, Fidede. A draw is not a perfect result, but Jamaica is turning heads around the world. Here's hoping the team can continue to rise and inspire more Jamaicans like myself. This is a small island, but there's a ton of fight, and nowhere is that better shown than around the football pitch. I got that peace to play with the Brang, brang, you don't know reggae boys to the top. Jamaica, one love, peace and love, blessed my lord. Jalib. See. My ideal day would be to uh, grab my wetsuit and my board, have a glassy right down the end of the street, and then start making my way to TJ, and then know that I'm going to be spending the next eight hours minimum in Tijuana.